Hey folks, it's Abby from Abby of Pelinor, and today I'm going to be showing you my long overdue Italy vlog. Me and my partner went to Italy back in the summer for his birthday, flying out on the awful jet too, and it was an amazing time. So I thought I would vlog it and send you guys along. There he is. First up, we went to Rome. Uh, and literally the day that we landed we went to the Colosseum, which was absolutely amazing. So, so gorgeous. There are so many old archaeological sites in Rome that we didn't get to see them all. But it was so much fun to see some of them. And of course, I found a cat. <laughs> Next day, and we technically went to a different country, we went to Vatican City, which my partner wasn't that into doing, but I may or may not have forced him to do it because I wanted to go there. <laughs> it ended up being something that we both really enjoyed. Neither of us are religious, but we both really enjoy architecture and history. So it was lovely to see the gorgeous architecture, even if it is a bit disconcerting to see that and then see everyone poor. And of course there were nuns working in the gift shop, so I had to film them. Surreptitiously. Sorry, nuns. She's wearing a mask. She's not identifiable. That's fine. And that was at the top of the dome. You have to walk all the way up. A ridiculous number of steps. The amount of people that are like having to sit down to rest uh, is high. I'm very, very, very tired by the end of this. I think our step count for every single day of this holiday was through the roof. These are all of the popes um, with their plaques on the wall as you walk down. And then we are inside <laughs> the cathedral itself. This footage is so shaky, but it's, it's gorgeous. And of course I found books. This was in Castle Sant'Angelo, I think. And these are some very, very old books that of course I made a beeline for. Apologies in advance for my Italian accent, it is not very good. This is the Perio dell'anno del Santis Gibello by Giovanni Simone Ruggieri from 1651. I apologized in advance. Do not yell at me for the accent. Then we have Trattato delle Sante Peregrinazioni by Gaspar de Loire. I feel like I need to apologize after saying all of these. And this final tiny one is Tesori dell'Anno Santo by Massimo Onorati. I spent a surprising amount of this trip just trying to find anything library related. This is the worst possible library I've ever seen. Sala Biblioteca. Where are the bibliotec? Where, where are the biblios? I see no biblios. Beautiful ceiling. No books. Then, of course, we went to the Pantheon, which is amazing. It is one of the oldest religious sites in the world. It's been used for a large variety of gods um, across of multiple different religions. And near the end of Rome, it was converted to Christianity. There's not a single supporting beam in that entire structure, which is stunning. And then there was a random protest, but we tried to figure out what it was. We were trying to Google what was on the signs, um, and trying to translate some of it, but we weren't able to figure out. Honestly, the amount of cats in Lago de Torre Argentina is ridiculous. Uh, I was in love. <laughs> I adore cats so, so much. Chris is less keen on them, uh, but he went there just to humour me. Unfortunately, we went there later in the day. If we went earlier, then we could have actually went into the little cat sanctuary, but no way. Hey, kitty. Look at this one. And at least Chris got to enjoy some of the architecture that you get to see around here of the various different religious sites. And there's Chris, fed up of my bullshit. And of course, there was a bookshop that Chris would not let me go in. Do my eyes deceive me, or is that a bookshop? 
And then we went to Naples. Napoli is the region that I'm most familiar with in Italy. I've been there a few times. We moved out there when I was very, very young, when my dad was in the army, and my mum fell in love. So we went back to visit quite a few times. So of course, if I'm taking my partner to Italy, I have to take him to Napoli. We ended up staying in two different places in Campania. But in Naples itself, we went to some of the underground tours. This is through the tunnels that the Greeks dug originally, I believe. And then the Romans took over. The Greeks used it for some sort of storage, I think. And the Romans then lined it with lead lined cement and used it for water storage. And then once the Romans left, the general populace then just threw rubbish down. When World War II came along, they cemented over that rubbish. That's where they went to hide uh, for their bunkers. And then of course we had to go to Pompeii. This is my favourite place in Pompeii. These gardens were reconstructed from the fossils of the roots from these plants. So this is exactly how it would have been. I adore it. And of course, a Colosseum. This Colosseum is very different to the one in Rome. And it gives a really different vibe to the place with it being so overgrown. This is the Villa de Mistri, which is so named for what I'm showing you right now. This, I guess I'll call it a tapestry, um, which shows entrance to a secret society through some tasks and challenges. We don't fully understand, apparently, what that is, but it's really interesting. And of course I took him up Vesuvius. Of course I took him up Vesuvius. If you don't know, I've mentioned it enough times, so why don't you? I did my master's thesis on Vesuvius. So I know this volcano like the back of my hand. I went up and down it for a week, as well as having visited it multiple times before. So I was so excited to finally take Chris up to view my favourite volcano. After seeing Vesuvius, we went back into Naples. We went to the Naples National Archaeological Museum, otherwise known as the Museo Archaeologico Nazionale di Napoli, and we saw this beautiful miniature of Pompeii. Seeing that after seeing Pompeii the day before was amazing. Okay, so excuse the mess, because we're packing up to leave. There's this gorgeous art on the walls and on the ceiling. And then I'll kind of weird bathroom. And inside is the loo and the bidet. There's glass over the artwork on the walls. And then the little shower in there. And then there is a little balcony out here, uh, but there's building work going on, so we've not been able to use it. And of course I managed to find books in the hotel. This hotel was a mixed experience, it's only from about the 1700s, but it's in quite bad state, partly due to the atmosphere in Akalano, which is where we were staying, and also just because Akalano is quite a poor area, there's no one really to maintain upkeep of this place. That's why they turned it into a hotel, to try and get some income. And so it was beautiful seeing the frescoes on the walls and on the ceilings, this beautiful old building. But they of course had books, so I had to go and find those. And then we went to Sorrento, which has changed massively over the years. Do not recommend going to Sorrento anymore, it is filled with Americans. Apologies if you're American watching this, but if you're on my channel, you probably understand why we ain't vibing with that. It's very different to how it used to be when I was little. So yeah, this is no longer the town that my mum fell in love with. If you really want to go to some of the small villages and towns in this area, I don't recommend Sorrento. Maybe for like a little day trip, but it is a tourist trap now, designed towards Americans, so that kind of vibe. Positano? will get you a nicer tourist experience. It is a bit more expensive, but it's less built up purely because they can't move the cliff behind it. And Maori is somewhere that will give you an actual genuine experience. It is a lot less touristy, which means that you're not going to get all of the facilities, but it will actually give you a realistic experience of the area. Even in the airport, I had to find the book. This was actually in Schiphol in Amsterdam. And then we flew home. What a trip. And I can tell you right now, I got no reading done. I took three books with me. I read none. Thank you so much for coming along guys, I know it is something very different to what I usually put on my tunnel, but I just wanted to document this for me. It was my first trip without my parents, or, or a school or anything, um, so it was a big one for me. Thank you for coming along, and if you'd like to see some more bookish related content set stubbornly in the UK, I'm afraid, then please do subscribe. Thank you, and bye.